In Sudan, Islamic schools known as Halwas teach children to memorize the Quran. Halwas have existed in Sudan for hundreds of years. There are nearly 30,000 of them, and they're celebrated for providing free education to children across the country. I'm Fata Al Rahman Al Hamdani, a journalist based in Sudan. I went undercover for BBC News Arabic to investigate reports of widespread abuse inside these schools. Since 2018, I've visited 23 halwas across Sudan and witnessed extreme forms of abuse. In many of them, I saw children shackled and chained. Some of them as young as five years old. I was shocked to see how routinely they were beaten, punished by the sheikhs who run the schools or by one of the older students for making mistakes when reciting the Quran. The children looked unhealthy and malnourished. Many forced to sleep on the floor in extreme heat. And sick children were left without medical help. During the course of the investigation, I came across a story that disturbed me more than anything else I had seen. Two 14-year-old boys, Ismail and Mohammed Nader, who were savagely beaten inside a harwa in Omdurman. I visited them immediately in Bari Hospital in Khartoum. Their injuries were horrific and barbaric. The day after the attack, the police arrested the sheikh in charge of the halwa and three teachers. Two of them were charged with assault. The sheikh and one other were charged with perverting the course of justice. But they were all released on bail and the halwa remained open. In 2018, I'd filmed inside the halwa in which Mohammed Nader and Ismail were horrifically beaten. Halwa al Khulafa al Rashidin, run by this man, Sheikh Hussein. This is the prison Mohammed Nader and Ismail were locked inside and tortured. They were given no food or water for five days. Children here were shackled for bad behavior or for trying to escape. Teachers kept a close eye on the children as they recited their lines, standing over them with a whip. The conditions here were the worst I had seen. It's no wonder Mohammed Nader and Ismail tried to escape. The boys' injuries were so severe, the doctors didn't think they would survive. They had to undergo months of surgery and physiotherapy. Sheikhs wield so much power in their communities that it's rare for families like Mohammed Nader's 
to press charges. But in 2018, a revolution started in Sudan. The old regime was overthrown and a transitional government was established, promising change and reform. Ismail and Mohammed Nader's families believe that in this new Sudan, they can get justice. Mohammed Nader's family are on their way to court. It will be the first time they face the alleged perpetrators. An hour later, the boys and their families leave court, but not with the news they wanted. The judge postponed the trial because one of the defendants failed to show up. But with every day that goes by, children continue to suffer inside Khalwas across Sudan. In the suburbs of Khartoum, I got to explore the Khalwa of Hajj al-Dali. While the sheikhs were busy with the evening prayer, I found a room full of whips and chains. In another, a young boy was crying. He was scared and desperate to go home. <laughs> The Halwa of Hajj al-Dali told the BBC that a new sheikh is now in charge and that chaining and beating have stopped. In North Darfur, I filmed secretly inside the Halwa of Ahmed Hanafi, one of the biggest and most respected. Inside a study session, I watched as a child was subjected to more than 30 lashes for arguing with another student. When we contacted the Halwa, the Sheikh confirmed that they do beat children as a form of discipline, but denied this incident took place. In Sudan, all forms of violence against children are illegal, and the new transitional government says that they are taking the matter of abuse in Halwa seriously. <laughs> Mohammed Nader is recovering, but he's struggling with his mental health and is afraid to go to school. Yes. He's beginning to open up about what happened to him and his smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
حصل قدامك يعني مثلا يا ولد؟ Mohammed Nader told us that rape was carried out by older students. And although he wasn't sexually abused, several other people told the BBC that rape happened in the Halwa under the management of Sheikh Hussein. Over the course of our investigation, we've seen sheikhs operate with impunity. Halwas in which abuse has taken place have remained open, leaving hundreds of children vulnerable. And families like Mohammed Nader's have been left to fight for justice on their own. Hello? It was time to meet Sheikh Hussein and put these allegations to him. Assalamu alaikum. The trial of Sheikh Hussein and the three other men charged following the assault of Mohammed Nader and Ismail has been postponed five times. He was warned by the authorities that if he wanted to keep his halwa open, the chaining of children had to stop. He was keen to show us the changes he'd made. The prison in which Mohammed Nader and Ismail were tortured is now nothing more than a storage room, and none of the children here are chained. We were told to end the interview, but allowed to stay and film the evening prayer. Shortly afterwards, Sheikh Hussein reappeared and wanted another chance to answer our questions. طيب شيخنا هل عندك أي حاجة عايز تضيفها؟ الحاصل الإسلامية هي أختان خطأ وجل ما لا يخطأ واعترفنا بهذا الخطأ والأمر الآن أمام القضاء أما السؤال الذي سألتني قلت أخبروك أن سمعت بأنه في هذا المجمع في اختصابات a few months after this interview, Sheikh Hussein died in a car accident. The charges against him have been dropped, and the Hadwa is now under the control of Sheikh Hussein's brother. He told us that he was always opposed to imprisoning children, and that under his management, 
the beating of children would not be tolerated. He also denied that rape has ever taken place in the Halwa. Muhammad <laughs> 